Hello, it's Miss Rumor here. I'm going to be guiding you through the Chapter 1, Day 3 notes, and these notes are for solving linear inequalities. Inequalities are different than equations because we use different symbols. We use symbols like less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. So instead of just a one number solution like x equals 3, we would have a range of numbers here for our solution the answer would look something like x is less than 3. So all of those numbers that are less than 3 would be our solution. Okay, so that's a big difference between equations and inequalities. We're going to look at what happens with a few different math operations when you're working with an inequality. So I'm just going to make one up here, something like 5 is less than 12. That's a true inequality. Let's see what happens if we add 2 to both sides. 5 plus 2 is 7, 12 plus 2 is 14. Is that still a true inequality? Is 7 less than 14? Yep, it sure is. What if we subtract 2 from both sides? 5 minus 2 is 3. 12 minus 2 is 10. Is that inequality still true? Yep, that's true. What about multiplying by 4? Let's take a peek. 5 times 4 is 20. 12 times 4 is 48. Is 20 less than 48? Yep, that works. Okay, so, so far so good. Some basic math operations don't affect your inequality. What happens when we multiply both sides by negative 4? 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Is that value still less than 12 times negative 4, negative 48? Well, here we actually have a little bit of a problem. Negative 20 is actually bigger in value than negative 48. It's closer to 0. So that one not true. If we take both sides and divide by 2, 5 divided by 2 is 2.5, 12 divided by 2 is 6, 2 and a half is less than 6, so that inequality is true. If we took both sides and divided by negative 2, 5 divided by negative 2 would be negative 2.5, is that less than 12 divided by negative 2, which is negative 6? Well, no, we run into a situation like we just did over here where the negative value is actually bigger than negative 6. Negative 2.5 is bigger than negative 6. So we have two very specific times when our inequality is not going to be true, and that is when we divide or multiply by negative value. When multiplying and dividing by a negative number, please flip the sign. In other words, flip your inequality symbol. Here, negative 2.5 less than negative 6 is not true. But if we take negative 2.5 and, and flip your symbol, then we do have a true statement. Negative 2.5 is greater than negative 6. Same thing over here. If we took negative 20 and flipped our symbol, then it would read negative 20 greater than negative 48, and that would be a true statement. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say flip your sign. Let's look at solving a few inequalities here. Uh, we're going to solve these just like we would regular equations, but our answer is going to be a little bit different. So here, normally, we would try to get y by itself. That means I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So 11y is greater than 22. Get y by itself. We're dividing by a positive, so we don't have to worry about flipping the symbol but we end up with a solution that says y is greater than 2. When you're graphing that on the number line, I'm going to put a 0 here for comparison, and then look at the number 2. Our solutions are going to have a circle above the 2. That means that 2 is actually not included. If we were to plug a 2 in here, we'd have 11 times 2. We'd have 22 minus 9 greater than 13, but that's actually not true. It's equal to. Okay, so 2 is not included here, but all of the numbers above it are. Okay, so that's what your solution should look like on the number line. Over here, 7x plus 9 greater than or equal to 10x minus 12. Here we have x's and numbers on both sides, but we want to put x's on one side, numbers. So the first thing that we're going to do here is take this 10x and move it to the other side. I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. So negative 3x greater than or equal to, and then the numbers to move to the other side, I'm going to subtract a 9, and that gives us negative 21 on this side. 
All right, so x is on one side, number is on the other. To get x by itself, we have to divide by negative 3. But remember, that was one of our issues up above. We said if you're dividing by a negative, you have to flip the sign. So our solution here is going to be x, instead of greater than or equal to, it's actually less than or equal to positive 7. On the number line, I'm going to put 0 here for reference, positive 7 about over here. This time, our solution on the number line is going to be graphed with a solid dot on 7 because 7, if you were to plug it in, actually makes a true statement. Okay, so 7 is included, but then so are all of the numbers less than 7. Oops, I'm erasing everything here. Okay, so your final product should look like this. There's your number line with your solution. X is less than or equal to 7. Then we get into a situation where we have compound inequalities. Up here we just solved simple inequalities. Down here, compound inequalities are inequalities with multiple symbols, I guess, is the easiest way to think of it. So at first glance, you'll notice I have a less than symbol here, a less than symbol here, a less than symbol here, a greater than symbol here. So we're dealing with multiple inequalities at the same time. We have two very specific types of compound inequalities. The first one is the and inequality. So let's look at this one first. Notice that your symbols are both facing the same direction. That's going to impact what your answer looks like, and we'll get to that in just a second. Let's simplify this first. t plus 4 is the expression in the middle. I want to get t by itself, so I'm going to subtract 4 but not just from the middle, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. t is in between your symbols here. t is greater than, the reason I say greater than is because the open part of the arrow is closest to the t. t is greater than negative 13. And at the same time, t is less than 10 minus 4, which is 6. Okay, if you look at your number line, here I'm going to put 0 for a reference point, put a positive 6 here, and a negative 13 down here. To complete our solution, we have just less than symbols, greater than symbol, sorry, just a greater than symbol and a less than symbol. Let's say it that way, it probably makes more sense. Okay, so we're going to put open circles on the 13 and the 6. Now this reads t is greater than negative 13. So if we were going to graph it, it would look like that. t less than 6 by itself would be graphed and look like that. Your solution's actually just the overlap here in the middle. So on your number line, let's just make our solution in the middle. Those are all of the numbers where if you picked one at a time and plugged them in, your inequality would be true. Okay, so this is your final answer right here. For this second compound inequality, this is an or compound inequality. And again, your solution is going to look different from the and inequality. Let's see why. For our first inequality to solve, I'm going to try to get x by itself here. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. That leaves us with 6x less than negative 6. I'm going to divide both sides by 6 to get x by itself, and that gives us x is less than negative 1. Now, you don't have to flip your symbol here. You're dividing by a positive number. The only time you would flip it is if you divide by a negative number. So x less than negative 1 is correct. For our second inequality, I'm going to add 8 to both sides to get x by itself. Gives us 3x greater than 21. Divide by 3 on both sides, and that gives us x is greater than 7. So let's look at what happens um, when we're plotting. I'm going to put a 0 in for reference, a negative 1, and a positive 7. If we're graphing these, we have x is less than negative 1, so that would look like this. x is greater than positive 7, that would look like this. Notice there's no overlap here because your solution's either going to be less than negative 1 to make this inequality true, or it's going to be a solution greater than 7 to make this inequality true up here. Okay, so this is an or compound inequality. Easiest way to notice it right off the bat without even getting to your solution is here. Our symbols are pointing the exact same direction. 
up here, your symbols are facing the opposite direction. Okay, so that's the easiest way to tell if you're dealing with an and or an or inequality. Just make sure that you graph carefully and you'll, you'll be okay. All right, moving on to everyone's favorite type of problem. It's a word problem. So let's see, milk will keep until its expiration date and will not freeze when stored at a minimum temperature of negative one degrees Celsius and a maximum temperature of five degrees Celsius. We have a range of values here, so that should lead you to notice that we're gonna be working with an inequality. The temperature C satisfies the inequality negative one less than C less than five. Write the inequality in degrees Fahrenheit given the formula C equals five ninths F minus 32. So what we're actually solving here is actually a conversion from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna write down our compound inequality here, only instead of C, I'm gonna replace C with 5 ninths, quantity F minus 32, less than five. Notice this is going to be an and inequality because both of your symbols are exactly the same. So you can write a little note to yourself here. Now let's get to solving. We have to try to get F by itself. First thing I want to do is get rid of this fraction. Now the fraction is being multiplied by the quantity, but instead of dividing fractions, that can get a little bit messy. Remember, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Right here, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. That's going to get rid of the fraction there. But what you do to one side, you have to do to all the other sides as well. In the middle, that leaves us with F minus 32. Let's simplify a little bit. We're getting closer. 9 fifths times negative 1 gives us negative 9 fifths on the left. On the right, 5 times 9 fifths, your 5s are going to reduce and you're left with just 9. The last step here to getting F by itself is to move this negative 32. And the way we do that is to add 32 to all sides. Now F is by itself. In your calculator, if you do negative 9 fifths, make sure you put the 9 fifths in parentheses, plus 32, and that's going to give you an answer of 30.2. On the right-hand side, 9 plus 32 gives you an answer of 41. Now remember I said that this problem really just involved us converting from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. So this 30.2 represents degrees, this 41 represents degrees as well. Now with a word problem, you can give a number answer, but it's not really gonna make complete sense for the problem until you finish and write your answer in words. So we can say that the milk will keep until its expiration date and not freeze if stored between 30.2 degrees Fahrenheit and 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so you see that and show up here as well. If you were to graph that solution on the number line, it would look like this. There's your zero for reference. 30.2 degrees would be over here. 41 degrees would be over here. It would be an open circle with the temperatures in between. So even if you draw the picture, you can see pretty easily that it's an and inequality. That's the end of notes for today. If you have any questions, go ahead and rewind and watch again and see if that'll clarify. If not, feel free to ask us questions in class tomorrow. All right, have a good night.